Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, this week, I'm gonna go ahead and answer a few more questions that you have. Uh, this one, solar related. I got two questions here, solar related, which is great because it's freaking hot. All right, so here we go. Great videos, I hope it didn't miss out on you already explaining this. Probably so. I mean, I got three years of videos there, but hey, let's go ahead and do it. By the way, this is from It's Just That Easy. That's kind of a cool handle. It's just that easy, right? Easy like Sunday morning. I have a 22 Winnebago Flex with two 190 watt roof panels going to a 30 amp Go Power solar controller. Mixed uh, replies on the use of the side port solar hookup. By the way, changing the whole freaking topic. Talking about two panels up top, solar controller. Now let's talk about the side port, right? Two different things, right? Got mixed replies on this side port, okay? I have a 100 watt panel uh, without a built-in controller. And I wanna hook it up to the side and thereby have 500 watts, uh, uh, approximately, right? Actually, it's about 480 at best. But if you are watching this in the winter and you got good sun strike, yeah, you probably could push 500. Did a video on that one too. Go watch it if you want to really figure out what I'm talking about. All right. I'm told that the side port hooks up to the controller. Question mark? All right. Um, I'm also told that because the two panels on the roof each have 190 watts and by adding 100 watts to my side port, the system would be degraded. Very true. What say you, guru, RV tech? Well, it is true. All right, here's the thing. Your solar controller is nothing more than a badass converter. What do I mean by that, okay? We have converters that are in the RV that basically takes 120 volts AC, steps it down to 12 volts DC, nominally, okay? That's the same thing that your solar controller is doing. However, it's not limited to 120 volts. Depending on the solar controller you have, and say with Go Power, it may be 100 volts, right? Anything between a, up, you know, from zero to 100 volts. Now, granted, you're not going to charge batteries if you're less than 12 volts or less than the nominal voltage of the battery. So let's just add two because of internal resistance. Once your panels start producing between 16 volts and 100 volts, that solar controller can convert that down, or convert it over to amps, and charge the batteries. Okay, that's how that works. We want to match those panels, okay? Now, Go Power, my understanding of their solar controllers, they really don't like putting panels in series. They actually say on their documentation, now it's been a few years, could be wrong, but they say on their documentation parallel only. So I'm assuming those are in parallel, okay? If they're in parallel, then voltage is everything. Those panels need to match. The 290 watt panels up on the roof, possibly Go Power as well, is probably about 20.4 uh, volts, okay? upwards of 20.4 volts. A 100 watt panel may be 16 or 17 volts, okay? If you were to plug that in, you know, and, and assuming it's connected to the solar controller, which more than likely it's not, because that would be two ports. You got your roof ports up there, and then <laughs> this would be a bad design. If they also daisy chained over to a side port, you would have to match that panel, right? Because again, you want to match the voltage. It's like taking a, a 24 volt battery and plugging it in parallel to a 12 volt battery. Best way to explain it. <laughs> it's gonna screw things up. Solar controller's not gonna get hurt, but it's gonna go, you know what, I don't like those numbers. And more precisely, what it's gonna do is it's gonna jump back and forth, right? It's just gonna jump back and forth. And all that jumping back and forth is missed time that it could be charging. Yes, at best what we would say is it would degrade them both down to the lower voltage. So I wouldn't do that. Honestly, what I would look at for 30 or 40 bucks gets you an individual solar controller just for that one 100 watt panel or possibly buy another 190 watt panel instead of the 100 watt panel. Yes, in both cases, it's going to cost a little bit more money, but you want to do that. And you do not, do not, please listen to me, do not hook up that 100 watt panel directly to the battery, okay? If you read the information on um, the uh, dated label on the back, VOC, volts open circuit, probably about 17 volts, you'll fry a battery, 
Okay. Now, granted, the voltage will drop under load, but these electrons move nearly at the speed of light. We can overcharge that battery. Please make sure you have a solar proper solar controller. You don't have to buy an expensive one because you just have the one panel, right? But you have to figure out is uh, first you want to verify. If you go on the other side, quite honestly, follow the wire. The side port, if you go on the other side, you're going to find the wires. Like right? outside, you see the side port. Inside, you see the wires. Follow the wires. If they go to the battery, ah, hmm, don't hook up to it because there needs to be a solar controller. And I will say OEMs in the beginning started doing that. I right? just didn't quite know. If it goes off into the wall, you're still not sure where it's going, but possibly going over to the solar controller. It's really hard to answer that question because I don't have your build sheet. Probably the best thing to do is call the manufacturer uh, of them and get their best guess. Otherwise, I would probably bypass that port altogether and start fresh with a new solar controller. I can bring in the cable, real simple. You can find a way over to the batteries. It's really not hard for what we call your deployables, right? I know it's political season. Y'all thought I said deplorables. <laughs> no, deployables. You deploy, you know, a solar panel. All right, so there you go. Um, I would say again, in short, they are right. I wouldn't use it, okay? Um, yes, you would denigrate or you would degrade the total uh, charge. Here's the second one to this two minute tech tip. All right, this is from Susan Ryan. I can't thank you enough for all the knowledge and laughs you have given me. I'm glad you said knowledge and not just laughs. Because then it kind of feels like, you know, a relationship of some sort. Hey, look, you're just nothing but funny. All right. Your videos are the bomb. Oh, you just want this answered. It's kind of like when I go get my hair cut, right? They'll go, oh, you know, they're, they're doing that for the tip. So I know you're doing it for the answer. Here we go, though. I will take it, though. Right? Can't thank you enough for all the knowledge and laughs you've given me. Uh, your videos are the bomb and are a high point of my week. All right. I'm a newbie with six 200-watt panels on the roof. Aha, uh -huh, you bought it with six 200-watt panels. So you bought an RV that already had this stuff on there. Very cool. A 2,000-watt inverter. Say what? Why do they put in a 2,000-watt inverter? All right. And two 200-amp-hour lithium batteries. My question is, is about parasitic draw. Oh, look, you look something up. Okay. Now, the reason I say that, you can't stop it unless you had big beard batteries. But here we go. Everything we buy these days, phones, computers, flashlights, and even blenders, come with charging cords. If I leave these cords plugged into a USB or regular outlets into the camper without a device attached, are they drawing any power? All right, plugging and unplugging isn't a big deal, but I would love to be able to leave the cords in the designated outlet so I don't have to hunt them every time. I need a huge 18, okay. Every time I need one on my huge 18-foot camper. Huge is relative. All right. Thanks again. Knowledge is power. No pun intended. Here we go. Your question is the parasitic draw. Um, I would say this. Get over it. It's going to be there. Okay? Um, typically what we teach in the uh, uh, training here at the National Army Training Academy is I will have every one, our week wonders. Week wonders. Hey, there's a new term. Week one Errors, week one peoples. All right, do an amp draw on their battery. Turn everything off in the RV. Turn everything off in the RV that's 12 volts and do an amp draw either on the positive cable or negative cable. Really doesn't matter, right? And see the parasitic draw. You're absolutely right, okay? If it's 12 volts, that means there's a circuit board. Yes, the circuit board is drawing a very small amount. I will say on average, you should expect if you were to turn everything off in the RV, one amp or short of one amp, okay, is what you're going to pull, okay? If you want to look at it this way, 12, 13, 14 watts. Now look at your battery. You got two 200 amp hour batteries, so that's 400 amp hours, and we're looking at about one amp per hour draw. Is it worth turning it off? That's why I'm saying get over it because quite honestly, probably not worth it. Now, if you see yourself in extended situations where, you know, that battery life is everything, then yeah, you want to you try and mitigate as much as you can. There's a lot of things you can't turn off. You can't turn off your CO detector. You can't turn off, you know, even if you turned off, um, say, your thermostats and put it in the off position, you're going to lower that, but the voltage is still there, right? There's still a little bit going because if you wanted to turn it back on, guess what you got to do? You got to touch it. 
voltage has got to be there in order to wake it back up. Okay, so that's why I was saying get over it. I wasn't being flippant about it. I was just saying get over it. It's more about now do your 200 amp hour batteries, the two that you have, meet the needs of your demand, right? So if you're going to be off for the weekend or something like that, they're getting you through it and they're still about 40, 50 percent, then yeah, I wouldn't worry about it at all. So no, um, I wouldn't create the habit of unplugging everything. Just make sure everything is off. Now, um, the blender, probably, unless it's digital, no. However, your 2,000 watt inverter, it's going to pull about 25 to 40 watts per hour just by itself, right? Because it's sitting there waiting to invert. And again, it's the same thing. as It's waiting for you to turn something on so the brains are there. Power's going to it at the ready to take care of that circuit on that 2,000 watts. Yeah, you're right. It's probably on your GFCI, which is where your blender is, and probably your refrigerator. So the thing is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't unplug everything. That, that creates a, another habit you really don't need. All right, there you go. Um, that being said, um, thank you for the kind words. If you have a question, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to help out. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just wanna learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. All right, we ready? We are ready. All right. Hey, this week I'm gonna go ahead and answer a few more. <laughs> Ansel. So, um, ah, well, here we go. Let's try that again. 14 volts and, well, these are lithium. Let me take it back. <laughs> Cause I'm easy. Easy like Sunday morning. You didn't pay me to sing, so good. If I have all those cords plugged into a USB, you got a blender that runs on 12 volts? What are you blending? Water, I don't think you can blend ice with a 12 volt blender, can you? Man, that only took about 15 minutes. Yeah. All right, but see, that's how the market is. Under promise, over deliver.